Cohen now sending a new message that he's not Trump's fixer anymore. Now, in a moment, I'm joined by one of Michael Cohen's biggest adversaries, lawyer Michael Avenatti. But first, a little background. It's Clinton loyalist Lanny Davis, who now says if Cohen could do things over again, he might rethink all his work for Trump. His answer was, I made good faith judgments. Hindsight is 2020. And he's also said, I want to hit the reset button. So there's a lot implied there that he's not speaking expressly. But I think you can sum it up by saying this is uh, a new uh, Michael Cohen with a new attitude about speaking his mind. And that may be, but the new Michael Cohen still faces the old Michael Cohen's federal probe, which is evident, and how Lanny Davis is now being quite friendly on his behalf with the feds. No question that Bob Mueller is a silent submarine, no leaks, focused on the facts. This uh, man, Mr. Mueller, is widely respected for his integrity, and nothing Rudy Giuliani says is going to affect his search for the facts. As mentioned, Michael Avenatti is my guest on The Beat. Now, you have said uh, Lanny Davis, who represents your adversary in this civil case, Michael Cohen, is being phony. What do you mean? Well, here's what I mean by that, Ari. I mean, Lon Lanny is a very good attorney. There's no question about that. Um, he's been a very good attorney for a number of years. You know, it appears that we finally have an adult in the room, which is refreshing. Uh, but uh, look, let me say this. Here is my take on what's going on, okay? You've seen a progression over the last couple months, and here's been the progression. Michael Cohen, through various means, has sent a message to Donald Trump, you know, I may not be in the tent. Well, that didn't get the reaction that he wanted from the president, so then he went the next step. You know, I might actually do this, meaning flip on him. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't get the reaction. So now he's hired Lanny Davis about a week ago or so. That didn't get the immediate reaction. He went on George Stephanopoulos. That didn't get the immediate reaction. So there's been an escalation here. And so when I say that Lanny's being phony, look, if Michael Cohen wanted to do the right thing and come clean and be the patriot and wave the flag and do all the other uh, stuff that they're saying that, that he is, that he's got a new lease on life, then he'd just do it. They'd stop telegraphing it, okay? They're telegraphing it, not to you or me or to the American public, but to Donald Trump. And I mean, how many more times are they gonna telegraph it until the American public is gonna say this is a bunch of nonsense? The guy needs to either do the right thing or not. Well, there are experts, including some who come on this show and said the Lanny Davis hire shows they're going further because you got a Clinton loyalist, you're getting ready for that public war. You're saying not necessarily. You're saying that your view of Cohen, someone that you know about, is that he would still back off all of this if he got the right assurances from President Trump? I think that's 100% correct. I think that if Michael Cohen could wave a wand right now and be welcomed back with open arms by the president, be brought back into the tent, could get some help paying his legal fees, that I, I absolutely think that that is the direction that he uh, would go. And I think ultimately he's not going to have that option and ultimately he's going to do what I told you he was going to do back in April before the raids. Um, I think it was on this show the first time I mentioned that they were putting a lot of faith in Michael Cohen, and I predicted that ultimately he would flip on the president, and I think ultimately that's what's going to happen. Do you think there are any clues as to whether Michael Cohen could face arrest imminently? I think time is certainly running out. I don't think you're going to, this is going to be delayed well into the fall. I think there's a lot of different uh, factors. I know there's a lot of different factors at play right now, so I don't know that it's going to be tomorrow or the next day or even next week, but I, I think time is running out on Michael you, Cohen. You're saying Michael Cohen in in your view is likely to be arrested by the end of the summer? Yes. Do you think he knows that? Yes. Do you think he knows on what charges? Because there's more than one avenue based on what we've seen they're investigating. I think he uh, has some idea uh, what those charges may be. I don't think he knows definitively, but I think he has some idea. And I think he's coming to the conclusion that a lot of defendants in this situation come to sooner rather than later, uh, which is he's in a lot of trouble. And he needs to be looking towards his, you know, at his family and whether he wants to go serve decades in a federal penitentiary. There's an old saying in the law, uh, enough about Michael, let's talk about Michael. Uh, and so enough about Michael Cohen, let's talk about Michael Avenatti, the New York Times, with quite a lengthy treatment of you in the magazine. And there's a scholar there who says, quote, 
We have Avenatti because the left so desperately desires an anti-Trump, a person who can elicit the same dopamine reaction in his supporters that Trump can from his. Uh, I could tell you there are viewers of the beat uh, that see you as a more important adversary of Donald Trump than, than most Democrats in Congress or even the talk about wanting you to run for office. This profile, this attention that you clearly are, are putting up with, if not courting, um, what does this say about your potential political future? Well, Ari, let me just say this. If you're going to go climb a mountain that you've never climbed before or a mountain that's really important for you to summit, do you want a guy, do you want a guide that says to you, you know, I don't know if we're going to be able to get up the face of that mountain. Or do you want a guy who looks you in the eye and says, let's go, we're going to go climb this mountain. Arguing by analogy, something that lawyers do, I take it that you're that guide in this analogy. Well, here's what I'll say. If I was going to take somebody up a side of a mountain, I'd make sure we summited. Uh, I don't know if there are mountains in London, but I'm, I'm told that's where you're headed. Why are you going to London? And does it relate to your civil case or your larger project uh, with the resistance? Well, I, I have another client that I was going to London for just by happenstance. Uh, and uh, I discovered that I was going to be there at the same time the president was going to be there. And so, you know, I thought I would... Uh, make it a very efficient trip, and so I'm going to be in London for a few days, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that balloon. Well, there are massive protests, and as you mentioned, a Trump baby blimp that, that we've covered on the show. Uh, based on your knowledge of Donald Trump, do you think this blimp is likely to upset him on his trip? I, I do, because I think, uh, I think he is a baby. I think he's a child in many ways, a petulant child, and I, I don't think he has thick skin. Um, and I'm also going to be participating in a women's march uh, on Friday that's being organized that I think is going to be a fabulous event and, and uh, incredibly successful. Michael Avenatti, as always, good to have you on the beat. Thank you. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. And we appreciate that.